Hey, what's going on? Shep here at Iron Anchor Cycles, and we are back with another project. Today, we've got a Road Glide Ultra here on the bench, and we're going to be doing an SNS cam chest installation on it. For this particular project, we're going with the full complete SNS uh, winter power package, which includes the oil pump, cam plate, as well as an SNS 475 cam. Uh, the SNS 475 is our particular go to for any stock Milwaukee 8 motor. Um, as an SNS puts it, it's their 100 horsepower out of the box cam. Uh, so bolt that in, put on a good exhaust, which we're going to do as well, and do we make it 100 horsepower in no time? So what we're going to cover in this video is some of the details of the in installation uh, that maybe aren't covered in some of the other videos that are out there. SNS has a great install video uh, for this particular kit, uh, but it doesn't necessarily include all the steps that you're going to need to know. Some of those details include replacing the cam bearing, as well as checking the alignment of your sprockets, and a few other details that we'll make sure to cover so that you've got that information. So from here, what we're going to do is start to strip the bike down and get ready to do the install, and we'll come back and pick up where we left off and dig into it with you guys. So stick around, stay tuned, and we'll get this project going. All right, so we're back. We've got uh, most of the components that we need to get out of the way, out of the way, and we're ready to start digging into the cam chest here. So at this point, we've got the bags, the side covers, the exhaust, push rods, and spark plugs removed out of the bike. Uh, so we're ready to start getting into the actual meat of the project. So from here, where we're gonna go is we're gonna get our cam chest opened up and we're gonna get the stock components removed and we'll check back in there and let you know what we're up to. All right, so we're back, and uh, as you can see, we've got all of our old components removed from the motor. Um, if you're not familiar with that procedure, pretty easy to uh, look that up and figure it out, or uh, otherwise um, check out a factory service manual. Pretty straightforward, just go in order and go from uh, inside, outside to inside, and uh, everything will come right out. So where we are now is um, we've still got the original cam bearing in there, um, and we've got everything else out. Um, why I wanted to come back and get back on the video here is I want to include a step which uh, a lot of the install videos don't have, which is a pretty critical step, which is to check the run out on the pinion shaft. And obviously, if we're not within spec, we're not going to be able to proceed and install these new components. Otherwise, the motor is just going to chew them all up and you kind of did all that work for nothing. So we've got our fueling uh, run out gauge here. And pretty easy. We've got the original uh, uh, bolt here from the sprocket back on, so we'll be able to turn the motor over. And we're just going to slide our gauge over and get that pin to sit on the shaft and it's in place. And then just get our thumb screws in here. All right. So with that lined up, we can start to look at what our runout is. And so for the purposes of this, I mean, you know, you can see what it's doing regardless, but you want to use that zero to be able to get an accurate measurement. So we'll start rotating the motor and we'll see where we are in terms of runout. And basically what you want to do is watch the arc uh, that that needle is moving. And when it gets to that furthest point out, you're going to kind of set your zero there and know that it's not moving any further uh, up than that and see where it goes. Now in this case it's reading backwards which you can still count the, the hashes but for the purposes of this I'm going to set it the other way. Put our zero at the bottom there and we'll see where we're going. So we've got that lined up and so now you just take a look and see how far it's going. So we know we're at zero, it's coming up, and you know, we're actually not quite at the bottom there. So our run out on this motor is we are just a hair under four thousandths. Just a hair. So that means we have passed the test, we're in the spec, and we can keep going with continuing uh, the installation here. 
Um, if you have a run out that's outside of the factory spec, obviously that means you're gonna have to take a pause and make some do some decision making about what you're gonna do at that point. Um, you've got a couple of different options, but in our case here, we're ready to roll and uh, we can proceed and uh, get the rest of this cam chest installed. All right, so after we've made sure that our crank runout is good, uh, we're gonna move on to replacing the cam bearing itself. Now, um, there's not an order to those things. We could have done the bearing first and checked the run out uh, afterwards, but uh, in this case, we did it the way we did it. So what we're gonna do from here is we've got our uh, cam bearing remover and installer tool from Jim's. Um, you know, there are plenty of these around. Um, you can get them, like I said, from Jim's, which is the one we have, or uh, there's, other, there's other sources for them. Um, we like the Jim's one because it gives you a little a couple little extra benefits that make things go a little quicker and just make sure you're doing everything right. Um, one is that the tool itself uh, is labeled. So you've got install and remove written on here. I'm just gonna make sure I'm lined up with the camera. Yeah, we're good. Um, install and remove here. So install is correct, ups, right side up. Remove is upside down, which means the tool goes on this way to install, flip it over, it goes on this way to do the remove. And what that's gonna mean is essentially your holes are gonna line up and you've got two different holes. This is the one you're gonna be using to remove and this is the one you're gonna be using to install. So they have to line up with the bearing so you flip the tool over. Um, so anyway, what we'll do is go ahead and get this uh, mounted onto the front side of the case here um, and uh, we'll, we'll get this going. But before we do that, uh, we have to get the actual uh, puller installed here. So um, what we're gonna do first is, I'm just gonna take a little bit of oil here. We're just gonna get some on these threads. Um, you put a pretty good amount of force uh, on this to uh, particularly start pulling the bearing out. So helps to just have the threads nicely lubricated so it doesn't want to eat itself up. Um, so then what we're gonna do is come in here. And so this is gonna be kind of a press fit to get through the bearing. And that's what you wanna hear is you wanna hear it going all the way through. Um, if it doesn't, if you don't hear that click and make sure that that tool is really seated behind the bearing, um, what'll happen is the uh, tool will start to expand inside the bearing itself and it will just shatter the bearing and all those rollers and metal pieces are gonna drop down inside your case. Um, and that's gonna be a bad day. So make sure that that tool is fully seated and you know you kind of get it in there and you can feel the flywheel and you go, okay, we're in. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and install uh, the inner rod. So now with that in place, we can go ahead and get the plate put on here. So with the remove side legible, we're gonna slide this on and we'll see that the holes line up with the case. The other thing, and I don't know if you can see it on here, the holes are all labeled with an I or an R. And basically what that's telling you obviously is the R is the remove holes and the I is the install holes. And you know, you'll figure it out even if that wasn't there. Um, but it's just a nice little uh, extra quick check. Like I said, the Jim's tool is really nice because they do that kind of thing for you. Um, so we'll get these thumb screws put in and these don't need to go in super tight. Obviously, that's why they're thumb screws and not uh, you know, something with a, a wrench fitting on the end. You're just holding this snugly next to the case. So your other gut check here obviously is, you know, if one of these holes isn't lining up, you've got this thing installed incorrectly. And obviously when it comes to uh, installing and removing bearings, being lined up correctly is the whole ball game. If you don't, uh, it's not gonna go in straight or it's gonna come out crooked and that's bad. All right, so from there, we're gonna do the same thing we did with that uh, threads on that puller. We're just gonna put some oil onto the thrust surfaces of this washer. All right, so we get that on. And then we're gonna go ahead and put our nut on. All right. I'm just gonna clean the oil off my hands here a little bit. And then you're just gonna need two wrenches to do this. One is gonna be to hold the shaft itself from rotating and the other one is gonna be to turn that big nut. But what we wanna do here before we tighten that down is we wanna get that uh, puller squared against the backside of the bearing. 
So you put a little bit of pressure on that just to keep it in place and snug that nut down. So now the tool is centered and aligned where it's supposed to be. So all we need to do is start to turn that big nut. Now, when you go to turn the nut, the whole tool in most cases is gonna to wanna to spin. So you have one wrench holding the tool and then the other one holding the bearing and, I'm sorry, the other one holding the big nut. And see that, you, I don't know if that was audible while I was talking, but you already had that little pop and that was uh, the bearing breaking free. So from here, we should have a pretty uh, consistent amount of force needed to continue to turn and pull this bearing out. Boom. Hopefully that was audible, little click. And that was our bearing releasing from inside the case. So I'm gonna confirm that, yep. So the whole tool is now free. I can feel that, the bearing is on there and uh, we're all set. So now what I'm gonna do is actually, before I take any of this apart, I'm just gonna take the whole thing off as an assembly. So we're gonna take our thumb screws out. And there you have it. There's your old bearing sitting on the mandrel there. So what we'll do to get this off is obviously we'll just disconnect all of this and the bearing will uh, come off easily this way. And uh, we'll proceed from here to go to installing the new one. One of the things, you know, I like to point out on um, this, this topic's been beaten to death, but um, you know, on these new bearings, one of the things that's, you know, a big difference and a benefit is the rollers inside here. Let's see if I can get the camera to actually focus on that. Um, there we go. So you can see that you have a fully packed bearing um, in terms of the rollers in there. The, the OE bearings have a cage. You get more rollers in this, runs better, it's better. It's why, um, you know, it's said that anytime you're doing something with the cam, replace this bearing. Um, it's really good insurance. Uh, cam bearings fail, OE ones, they do. Um, you know, the higher your mileage is, the more likely is you're gonna have a problem. Um, this is cheap, and as we're showing you, it's easy to change. Um, so just make sure you do that uh, anytime you're in here doing this. So uh, enough said on that topic, we're gonna go ahead and install this. So uh, these bearings are directional, right? So on one side of it, uh, you have a flat surface. On the other side, it's rounded. Um, if that wasn't obvious enough, which side you should be pushing with a tool on, uh, they make it real easy for you because the flat side is lettered and it's got, you know, part number, et cetera on there. That side faces you out when you're putting this in so that you're pushing with the tool on the flat side of the part, not on the round side, which will break it. So um, we've got our Jim's tool here again with a couple of different accessories. Um, this time, just get this cam plate. We're gonna be using this the other way around and we're gonna be using the installer part of the tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and just like I did before, I'm gonna put a little oil on these threads. And we should be good to go there. I'm just gonna quickly check and just kind of run my finger through here and just make sure that the surface uh, for the bearing is clear and clean and there's no burrs or anything weird in there and that feels great. Um, so we are ready to go ahead and, uh, and put this bearing in. So we're gonna take our tool and start by threading the installer through the plate. Um, and we're gonna go basically enough so that we can kind of make sure that this is aligned uh, once we get the uh, the arbor on the end, and then we get the bearing on as well to make sure that it's lining up with the bore inside the motor. Um, so we'll stop there for the moment. So we're gonna go ahead and add a couple of pieces here. First is gonna be the adapter here. We're gonna thread that on. And then we're gonna take the arbor itself, which uh, this is 
I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the camera. Let me see if I can get behind here. As you can see now, uh, this installer is a very specific piece. It's stepped so that it will install the bearing to the correct depth inside the motor. Um, if you try to use some sort of a universal tool or something like that and it's flush, um, you're not going to put the bearing in far enough because the bearing will be flush with the inside of the case and that's not where it's supposed to be. Um, it's supposed to be that much further in. Um, so that's why you want to make sure you're using the proper tools. So with our bearing here and my fingers have a little bit of oil on them, which is good. Um, I'm not trying to go crazy with this, but just lubricate it just a little bit um, before we put it on here. So we're going to take the bearing again, letters onto the tool. So the curved side goes in and I'm going to come down here and get this lined up and we're going to start to put our thumb screws in. Now, the same thing, like I said, you have the I's and the R's, the I's are going to be the ones we use this time because we're installing. So I haven't tightened those all the way. What I'm gonna do here is just run this tool in a little bit and I wanna make sure that I get it uh, so that it's 100% aligned and square um, with the opening on the case. So by just getting it to touch, which is where we are right there, that will ensure the proper alignment um, on the tool. So there, boom. So go ahead and thread these in. I'm going to just back this off. I want to make sure that these are totally seated and that wasn't holding it up. Now we push it back up and that's very nicely just lining up square inside there. So now we're ready to do the fun part, which is running this in. So we're going to take our wrench, put it on here, and we're just going to, with slow, even consistent pressure, just start to turn this bearing push this bearing inside the case by turning the tool. And like I mentioned previously when we're doing the removal, paying attention to the pressure is critical here. So it feels consistent as we're doing this. It's going to get a little tighter as the bearing starts to move in and there's more drag as more of the bearing is making contact with the case. But it's obvious when you get to the end and the bearing is seated. All right, so we're getting a little tighter. Do a little check. About two thirds in, maybe three quarters. And that's it right there. Hard to turn it, that's it. No need to, you know, wrench down on this crazy tight. Um, when it's seated, it's seated. So we'll turn the tool around here and we'll loosen and thread the tool out. Now, sometimes this comes apart in different ways. Um, in this case, uh, the tool kind of separated there. Um, we'll pull the other pieces out. You'll see as I do this. Sorry if I'm blocking uh, the view a little bit with my arms. It's a little hard to do this from the side. Okay, 
So you got that, and then we just grab our the rest of our installer tool from inside, and there it is. So what we'll do now is just put this down and do a quick check of our bearing to see that it is where it's supposed to be, that it's even and consistent all the way around, the rollers spring freely, and a double check that we installed it correctly, that we are looking at the part number and lettering on the outside of the bearing, which we are. So that's the install of the bearing. Um, we're gonna continue now with getting some of our new components uh, from SNS unboxed, cleaned up, and uh, we'll check back in as we start to install those.